Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Thule Hitching Post Pro here on the back of our 2021 Ford Bronco. So if you guys do find yourself in the Bronco, this is going to be an excellent vehicle to go ahead and hit any terrain that you do encounter. Of course, you had that really cool goat mode. That means we're going to be able to take this guy on a host of different trails and get there with no problem. So what's going to be an excellent way is going ahead and also bring in our bikes. That way we can go ahead, get in those deep backwoods, start having a lot of fun on our bikes. Now, of course, this is still going to be excellent for just your standard road bikes as well. Bring it up to those closed state parks. Going to have a lot of different options with yourself. So one thing I really like with the hanging style rack, we are going ahead and just kind of giving ourselves a little bit more clearance that you might see from a platform style carrier. So today we are on our draw tight hitch as well. So we are going to be a little bit more extended that you might compare to some of the other hitch options out there. If you compare it to like the Kurt class three also, it just has a way shorter barrel. So you're not having this receiver stick sticking out all the way. You actually are losing about six inches from this hitch pin hole going backwards, just to give you guys a rough idea. Now you can see here today with the draw tight, that's giving us a ton of clearance to really get past this spare tire. That's kind of why we went ahead and installed this guy, because I think if you're put, looking to put a, diff, a lot of different accessories on, you definitely want that extension to help out with it. But the Thule Hitching Post Pro itself is an excellent little carrier. It's going to do a great job of getting some of your smaller bikes up into that mountain bike range to your destination. Why I say that, it does have a 35 pound weight capacity limit per bike, so that is going to be a little bit, a little bit more limiting for ourselves. If you do find yourself with your heavier mountain bikes, you're going to have to start looking up to some more, um, more probably platform style carriers is going to be your best bet as the hanging style just kind of limits you on that weight capability as we do get ourselves set up on here. However, we do have our nice dual arm support feature, pretty standard for bike racks, right? That's going to keep our bike from tilting so much. But the big, big thing with hanging style racks, you're going to have sway. You're going to have this happen. You're going to have your bikes starting to interact with each other. And especially if you do find yourself taking this to the backwoods, going to have a lot of interaction. Well, that's where our anti-sway control cable cradle here is really going to be useful. So this guy really limits it. Now it's not going to completely eliminate it. You're going to have a lot of movement on here, but what this does is really bring everything back in line faster and prevent the amount it can actually move, right? So we're not having those big swings. You're probably still going to have contact. Your bikes are still going to be rubbing up on each other just a little bit, but hopefully we're taking a lot of that kinetic energy down and just bringing it back in line relatively quickly, especially without having those cradles on there. The cradles themselves though are very, very nice. I really like how the rubber strip works on here. It's nice and thick. You know it's going to be holding up to the weather. Going to be okay to leave this in the sun for the years to come, which is great. With the cradles themselves too, you do have these really nice grooves on the inside. I love these. Go ahead and get your brake lines in there. That way you're not having any friction building up on your paint or on your frame. Going to have no issues with that, which is awesome. And of course, it is nice and rubberized, so you're not having any kind of hard contact there that can end up damaging it. Now, because we do have frame contact though, that's going to eliminate us from carrying our carbon frame bikes. Again, if you're looking for a way of getting uh, your carbon frame bikes to that destination, probably going to have to start looking at a platform style rack that can actually go ahead and clamp onto that front wheel. I'm sure you guys are pretty well aware of that, but just kind of get ahead of it. And if you do have any women's bikes, step through bikes or kids bikes, sometimes they have a little bit of a hard issue kind of utilizing this horizontal mount here. So if you guys have that issue, you may need to grab yourself a bike adapter bar to go ahead and clamp underneath your seat posts and your handlebars. That way you can give yourself a nice solid horizontal structure to actually get your bike up on here, which is great. So overall, still very, very nice when we get four bikes on here. Now I will say, because because of this dual arm support feature, you might have a little bit of a, just a, a longer time of mounting your bikes up on here. Our mountain bike here has just a, a little bit of a smaller frame, so it is going to take just a little bit of work. What I like to do, make sure my cradles are more tucked to the inside, get them out of my way as much as I can. Then we simply want to lift our bike, trying to release it from that cradle, and we can kind of keep doing that the entirety rest of the rest of the way here. Again, you just kind of have to walk it off. And the smaller your frame here is in the middle, just the more challenging that can definitely be. It's not going to be the end of the world just to kind of gently walk it off over those cradles. So you're only going to be doing that every now and then, right? Hopefully you got a couple of, help to, a couple of hands to help as well as we do have four bikes on here. But now that our bike is removed, I just want to go ahead and start cinching everything up just to make it look a little bit better for ourselves. Now the big thing for me though, we are going to be adding quite a lot of length here today because we have that really long draw tight, which is great to get us past that spare tire, but we also do have quite a lot of extension here on our shank. So that's going to be the big thing to look out for me here. How much length are we adding to the back of our Bronco? So 
Let's go ahead and see from the rear of the bumper here. If I can get that guy to set to the very end, that's gonna be putting you right at 46 and a half inches there. Let me go ahead and double check myself. Actually, let's put that at 47 and one quarter inches to the very back. So um, definitely a little bit of length to kind of watch out for there. Now, that is quite a lot. However, we do have a way of shortening that down for ourselves. The only thing I will say, with that being so much, let us be very careful when we do approach any kind of tall hills as the front wheels go up, the back will go down and slowly your hitch mounted accessories. Since we are so far from that bumper, could be something to kind of just watch on your first couple takeouts, see how well these bikes are dipping down or how much they're dipping down. Let's make sure we're not having any clearance issues there. But we do have a lot of post here, so I think we're gonna be okay. And we can quickly shorten down this length too. So maybe we wanna pull this guy in the garage, give ourselves a little bit more maneuverability to go park in. All we have to do, pull that pin and clip out, go ahead and line this up. And then simply replace our pin and clip. And there we are, nice and secure. One thing I really like about this, how little movement there is when it's in this position. You're not going to be feeling it. You're definitely not going to be hearing it, which is great. Sometimes those arms just kind of be loosey-goosey and they can be really annoying. I like that till he locks them in and then we're not having any constant road shake or contact, which is awesome. So that's really going to help us shorten down a lot of our length though here, guys. So from the back of the bumper here today to the very end now is putting you right about 24 and a half inches to the very end. So about two feet now compared to that 48 or so that we were working with, 47 I believe. So definitely helps to cut that down a lot now. Hopefully we can get this in the garage, but it's not gonna be the end of the world to have to take off this carrier. It is pretty lightweight. The only thing too that is we are gonna get the matching with our hitch and our bolt a little bit. But uh, hopefully now we have a little bit of room to pull this in the garage. Now the Bronco is somewhat longer, so that might be a slight issue for some of us. But we do have a way of tilting this away as well. At the very bottom, we have our little pin clip here as well again. And I can just pull that guy out. One thing I really like, you have these safety cables that let it hang here. That's really nice for me. I don't have to forget them and lose them. Now my only thing is though, we might be a little too high here to actually get our spare tire to clear. So let's go ahead and see if we're having good clearance. Man, look at that. I love how well that actually does. Getting out of the way, even all the way extended here, can go ahead and get that full clearance. So that's something I really like to see. I was a little worried about that post, but now I can go ahead, I can get those bike helmets, coolers, anything I might need in the back here. We have a lot of space in the Bronco, especially as you start taking these panels off, right? Maybe we don't need to open up that hatch, but still nice that we have the option to, if it is maybe a little rainy out and we don't have the hard top off, which is gonna be nice just to have that option. Like that, I have the peace of mind too. I don't have to watch it now. I can just walk it right up and I know it's gonna fit. All we have to do though, walk that back up, replace our pen and clip. And at the very inside here too, you are seeing this little U-bolt. I like this. One thing I could highly recommend for yourself is actually grabbing yourself some kind of locking system, A, for your bikes, because we want to go ahead and protect those bikes um, when we leave them unattended, especially if you find yourself on a longer road trip. This can be an excellent point to go ahead and start tying that off to. Um, and then the other clearance we want to watch out for is just going to be right here as we are very much extended from that rear axle. So let's go ahead and take a look at that together really quick, guys. From the ground to the very end here, that's going to be putting you right at 14 and 5 eighths of an inch to the very side there. So definitely not going to be too much of a worry for me. I think we're about a foot and a half foot and so up, that's putting us in a pretty good clearance. But again, I would just check it every now and then, especially if you find yourself really hitting the trails and really finding yourself on a lot of hills. On the inside though, you guys can see we do have naturally an inch and a quarter shank. However, we also do have a two inch sleeve converter, allowing ourselves to utilize our two inch hitches, which can be great. Now that we only have two inch hitches available here at eTrailer.com, so I think most of us are gonna be working with the two inch hitch, but Nice that we have that little option too. You can throw this on another vehicle in the family. I don't really do like the versatility of it. One thing that's great about it too, you're not losing any capability because you have this converter. So that's really nice to see. Sometimes it stinks when you have to go up or down with that. Now on the inside here though, we do have just a nice little threaded anti-rattle hitch bolt. Now this guy's pretty small, but it still does a great job. They are pretty standard across the industry. But as I shake this, you can see it's all in line with our Bronco. That means we're taking all that play out, not gonna have as much movement and especially on a hanging style rack, that is huge. Now, one thing I will say to that too, though, don't have a way of locking it right now, right? Anybody with three quarter inch ratchet and socket set's gonna take it off in an instant or a wrench, so there's really no protection there. But the snug tight hitch adapter could be great from Thule itself to go ahead and actually give you a way of locking your carrier to your vehicle when you leave it unattended. And honestly, it's a nice rack. We wanna protect it. It's got that quintessential bike rack look, so I'm sure others are gonna like it too. 
going to be nice to go ahead and give us that peace of mind of making sure it's on our vehicle when we leave it unattended. So for the big things for me here, though, I really like how we're getting this really extended from that spare tire carrier. I'm really impressed with how that was actually swinging away. I love that it can open up that entire back hatch. And of course, we're not impacting our taillights too much as we are kind of out to the side. Now, maybe if you got some really long bikes on there, but even then, you're probably going to be limited on that weight capacity. So I don't think your bikes are really going to be impacting that too much, which is definitely nice for ourselves. So love that we're not impacting our top vision here too, as we're staying nice and low and grounded there. Well, guys, I think that that about does it for our look at the Thule Hitching Post Pro here on the back of our 2021 Ford Bronco. I'm Bobby. Thank you for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.